Hi, I'm Tim Tyler and this video introduces the topic of intracranial mimetics. The Darwinian invasion of the social sciences began with the idea that the human mind was an adaptation and that this was actually a deep and fundamental principle that affected everything. However, while existing social scientists were adapting to that revolution, there were other invasions by the Darwin enthusiasts. Perhaps low-level brain structures were doing something akin to Darwinian evolution in a form of somatic selection, with axons competing for connection sites, neurons competing with other neurons during development, and so on. Perhaps there was also something akin to natural selection going on between ideas as well, with new ideas arising as mutations of old ones, and then survival of the fittest taking place between the variants inside individual minds. That brings us to a reductionistic approach to memetics, which involves considering the fate of memes when they are inside skulls, separately from their fate when they are outside skulls. On one hand, there is intracranial memetics, which considers the brain to be a black box and considers the epidemiology of ideas when they exist outside brains. On the other hand, there is intracranial memetics, which considers the external world to be a black box and considers the fate of ideas within brains. Here is fellow YouTuber Lord Immolation on the issue. Now, I like to think of um, meme ecosystems, so to speak, in as two different types. We've got the intrapersonal meme ecosystem, which is this one here, and the inter -meme, uh, interpersonal meme ecosystem, which is the world at large. To illustrate with an example, consider the propagation of Islam and Christianity. Intracranial memetics might consider the roots these ideas take into brains, holy books, evangelism, marriage, and so on. By contrast, intracranial memetics might consider the fates of these ideas once they are inside a brain. Is a Christian considering marriage to a Muslim going to convert in order to appease their mate? For an idea, making its way into a brain is often not enough. It then frequently has to battle its way to dominance with the existing inhabitants. Intracranial memetics treads on turf traditionally occupied by sociologists, whereas intracranial memetics treads on turf traditionally occupied by psychologists. Intracranial memetics is Darwinian in that it exhibits reproduction, variation and selection, provided you are prepared to accept that reproduction takes place as a result of dynamics hidden inside the black box representing brains. Intracranial memetics itself can also be seen as being Darwinian in character. Inside brains there is variation, selection, and at least a bit of reproduction operating on ideas. Many ideas enter a cranium from the environment and then compete for space with the existing occupants. However, there are also ideas that arise from within, and some of those may never leave an individual's cranium. It seems pretty obvious that ideas may mutate and compete for limited mental resources with other ideas. As Linus Pauling once quipped, the way to get good ideas is to get lots of ideas and throw the bad ones away. However, the question of whether ideas reproduce very much is not so clear. First, here is Daniel Dennett on the issue. Every time you read it or say it, you make another copy in your brain. Every time you read it or say it, you make another copy in your brain. <laughs> With me, everybody. Every time you read it or say it, you make another copy in your brain. Thank you. Daniel's point is made amusingly, but it's hard to take it very seriously. I mean, every time? What if you repeat something ten times? A hundred times? It is reasonable to think that your short-term verbal memory can hold a dozen items or so, including some duplicate copies of words. But if there is very much repetition, the brain probably only stores repeated information once, and then simply counts the repetitions. This raises the issue of whether the brain makes multiple copies of ideas at all. Among computer programmers there's a proverb which goes, replace repeated code with calls to a common function. There's also advice about when to apply this proverb which goes, tolerate duplication, refactor triplication. Could the brain work something like that? Possibly, but if you think about how the brain works at a neural level, there's probably a strong tendency to reuse concepts. However, pragmatically, it's probably possible to regard copying as taking place, even if the underlying concepts are being reused. Imagine you form a plan to shop for a present for your mother. Anticipating a positive outcome, you also plan to shop for a present for your father. The second plan can usefully be said to have been a copy of the first plan. Elements of the plan have been copied, even though there may be reuse of the underlying neural structures representing the concepts of shop and present. So. 
with variation, reproduction and selection, the contents of a single mind can be usefully viewed as operating with Darwinian dynamics. Probably the next issue that arises is whether the mutation rate is low enough to prevent a genetic meltdown. Some childhood memories can last for a lifetime, so there is at least a basic level of resistance to noise. However, this video is an introductory one, and such issues will be addressed at a later date. Enjoy!